and for a, a, and a lawyer would have their first and foremost responsibility to the bar. They have an oath to the law society, do they not? They have a, you know, they, their foremost duties and obligations are to the court. Okay, so, but it's not to the client though, is it? Sorry? So it's not to the client? No, that comes next. That comes next, right. So if, so if you're standing in a court and they've got a duty and obligation first and foremost to the court and not to you, who's batting for you? You know, and that's if I choose to be a you, you know, myself creating a legal joinder between myself and a person. You know, I've gone through all of that jazz and I've tried to challenge that in, you know, district courts before. And it's, you know, the old maxim, presence of the body corrects the floor and the name was brought up and that was the end of it. I was standing there, that's it, I'm him. I'm not sure how we can help you because we don't... Well, I, I figured you guys are the law society, aren't you, where the buck stops? Don't you understand your legislature? Or? Yes, but we don't have... Is not, are we not all equal before the law, or is it only before the law gets involved? Right. Um, I'm just going to call up the New Zealand Law Society to ask them about the laws regarding recording in public. I want to make sure I can legally stand there and film and from what my understanding is in the Summary Offences Act 1981 uh, it states that um, a public place is anywhere that's open to the public, be it free or by charge. Um, anywhere is a public place is anywhere you can be done for breach of peace. I would have thought. But then that may also apply to private as well. Anyway, let's give them a call. Phone number is 304, this is Auckland, so 09 304 1000. Sorry, what was your name? Norsha. Norsha. Hi, um, my name's Mark. Uh, I've got a couple of quick uh, legal questions. Am I able to ask you guys that? Is it for legal advice? Uh, well, it's just a question about legislature. It's not really advice in regards to any matter. Um, I'll just check someone. Just hold on one moment. Thank you. Sorry, was that Gareth? Yes. Gareth, hi, my name's Mark. Um, I've got a couple of uh, quick sort of pro quo legal questions if I could ask. Um, it's not in regards to any particular matter. It's more of a CYA questions than anything else. Um, can I pose them to you, just briefly? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, we are unable to give any legal advice. Oh, of course not. No, no, it's just, well, I mean, it's just in regards to legislature and point me in the right sort of direction as to where I could ask or find or, you know derive the answers from. Um, I've, I've got a couple of questions. My daughter's got to perform in a mall opening um, next Thursday at Westgate there and um, I want to be able to film her and I want to make sure, you know, you've seen a few clips on YouTube how people get in trouble with the security at the mall for um, for recording. Um, is it okay to record in a public place? Um, to be honest, I'm, I, I wouldn't be um, sure of the answer to that. Um, I'm not even sure where you'd look to find that. Um, personally, I don't see why there would be an issue. Well, I mean, to me, anything that Google puts on Google Earth, you know, you'd be able to do yourself. So if you're, if, if you're like standing on a footpath and you decide to film um, a, a business building or something like that, you'd be fine. I guess, it, uh, I guess maybe it would depend on, on, on where you were when you were actually doing that. Like, 
Sure. Well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, say I'm sitting in my car in and I've been, say, parked there for an hour. Um, and say I'm looking over at a police station, for instance, and I see photography or some film crew going on in the back of the police station. And I decide to, while I'm sitting in my car on the roadside there parked, to film them. Would I be in trouble? Are Because uh, um, I'm, ju I'm just like a member of the public standing there, you know, filming anything that... Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that there's like a peeping and peering thing, but from what I could understand and what I could find on legislature.gov.nz there, um, that under peeping and peering, there's only the Summary Offences Act 1981, Section 30, that states about um, at night time, and filming into a private dwelling house, which I don't think a police station is. I guess the other issue is that it, it maybe begins to few ask these questions of, um, like at a, a community law centre or citizens advice, I can give you a number for them, because you've actually come through to the lawyer's complaint service. So we really complaints about lawyer's conduct. Oh, okay. So like, for instance, if, if I was, um, sitting uh, talking to a duty solicitor at, at North Shore District Court and she decided to get up and walk out on me, would that be, uh, and, and not be able to define to me what certain words were, would that be misconduct? Because she'd be able to, like, I just asked what an offence was and she got up and walked out. Well, it would depend on the circumstances, whether or not you were her client. Well, she was a duty solicitor, it was my um, preliminary appearance, I suppose you'd call it. A complaint that you wish to make? Well, I'm just, as a theory, would that be a valid complaint? Would she have breached anything? Would she have been failing to act in her duty solicitor role by not explaining to me what the offence was? Well, I mean, again, that's a difficult question, if only because lawyers, uh, like, they have rights to their clients, so someone that they've signed a, a letter of engagement with. Sure, OK. Um, they have very limited rights to, to any other party. But, like, for a duty solicitor, obviously they're open to anybody. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not representing anybody unless, you know, they want them to. Yeah, I mean, technically, yes, she, she should probably help you out. But in terms of the technicalities of that, I mean, that's... I believe the words were, you're too much for me, Mark. I'm ending this now. That's and got up and walked out on me. That has actually happened. Yeah, that's actually happened. I'm just asking as a... As a I guess if you... It's not for us to decide. It's for... A, Okay, okay. I mean, you would need to make a complaint that mm. would go before the Standards Committee to actually decide. Okay, the, the, I, I suppose the reason I'm asking is, is not only because I'm going to be filming, you know, next week and Thursday at the mall there, and I mean, my, my daughter's been given the opportunity to do some performing and cool, you know, it's, it's all free, we're not getting paid for it. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't in breach of any legislative rule of society, to, you know, before I go and film in public, and to me, Anywhere you can whip out a cell phone and record things, I've never seen anybody get arrested for that sort of jazz. Mm. But um, the, the, the peeping and peering thing was because I actually had a constable, or a sergeant actually, um, mention to me about peeping and peering mm. because I was filming in a public place. And I, and I mean, I, I vlog a lot, you know, I, I, I've recorded the police hundreds of times mm. in the public and there's never, never been an issue. But it seems to be that because, hypothetically, I may have been filming the police station, he took an issue with it, mm. told me it was a private residence, and, and that's the end of it. And then he demanded my details. He said it was almost akin to peeping and peering. Mm. Well, I could have almost hit him. But the fact that I didn't means I've done no wrong. And for him to bring that as a reason to demand my details, which I believe I have a right to privacy, I don't have to give them my details unless I've committed an offence, I would have thought. I mean, it sounds to me like what you actually um, probably require is some, is some legal advice. See, but the problem is that I, it's my understanding that in any legal representative is, is representing my legal person or the natural person, none of which I am. I'm just a man and I'm not jumping into that realm. And for a, a, and a lawyer would have their first and foremost responsibility to the bar. They have an oath to the law society, do they not? 
foremost duties and obligations are to the court. Okay, so, but it's not to the client though, is it? Sorry? So it's not to the client? No, that comes next. That comes next, right. So if, so if you're standing in a court and they've got a duty and obligation first and foremost to the court and not to you, who's batting for you? You know, and that's if I choose to be a you, you know, myself creating a legal jointer between myself and a person. You know, I've gone through all of that jazz and I've tried to challenge that in, you know, district courts before. And it's, you know, the old maxim, presence of the body corrects the floor and the name was brought up and that was the end of it. I was standing there, that's it, I'm him. No crime had been committed. And this is my issue that I am seem to be having at the moment. The, a police sergeant coming up to me and telling me that I'm not allowed to do something, well, it doesn't work that way. I'm allowed to do whatever I wish, unless I've breached someone else's peace or caused some harm, loss or injury. Um, who is he to tell me I'm not allowed to do something? Who is he to tell me? And he, would, he wouldn't give me a reason why he was detaining me. He said I wasn't free to go. Well, that's arrest, that's detention. I wasn't allowed to move, otherwise he was going to give me harm. The issue that, that I had um, with this only is that I'm not sure how we can help you because we don't... Well, I, I figured you guys are the law society, aren't you, where the buck stops? Don't you understand your legislature? Or? Yes, but we don't have, uh, we don't have, um, you, you know, we deal with the conduct of lawyers, not police officers. Yeah, well, I mean, I've put a complaint through to IPCA over the sergeant. But, I mean, I've gone right through to Judge Sir David Carruthers, you know, the head of the, the chair of the IPCA, and he just has put it down to the fact that he said that it, he doesn't have the money to chase up every complaint, so it appears that money comes before ethics and, and morality and, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I, had a, I had a constable run over me in a, with his car while he was running away from me because he didn't want to answer my questions. Well, a complaint's not going to get me anywhere. It's, it, I, I mean, would not the, the best be? I mean, I've had multiple. I've asked multiple lawyers about all of these issues, and all the lawyers seem to be telling me is that's just how it is in New Zealand. Go to the IPCA, and I go to the IPCA, and they turn around and say, well, you need to get private legal advice. But then we've got the whole. They have their duty first and foremost to the court thing. So I don't feel they're being acting in my best interests, my person, me or my person's interests. You know. They're only there to represent somebody. I'm, I'll, I'll be in the court present as a man, or at the court present as a man, in my body. Their duties to the court are not to mislead or deceive the court. Okay, but for them to tell, stand there in the court and to say that I am that legal person, and even though I might bring in my birth certificate or my birth printout, which is the natural person, I might bring in those documents to prove that they are there, mm. but I'm a man equal to any other man. Is not are we not all equal before the law, or is it only before the law gets involved? I think uh, the, the the only thing that I can offer you is if you have a complaint mm. um, that you wish to make about the conduct of a lawyer. Okay. I can send you a form to fill out. Um, oh yeah, no, please send me a form. I'd love to have a copy of one of them. Sure. Yep. And um, I can send you that form, and then you can fill that out with the lawyer's details and, and send that back to us. In terms of um, your other questions regarding the filming and, and the police, mm. open to a community law centre? Um, not in regards to that matter. I have gone into the Citizens Advice Bureau and spoken to community lawyers before, as I've said, in regards to you know being run over by the constable and the misconduct of the JP and, and that sort of thing. Well, would you like me to, to give you the number for the Auckland Community Law Centre? Are you sure, go right ahead. You're in Auckland? Yes. Yeah, it's well, the, yeah, Auckland. The, Uh, or is there one for West Auckland? Uh, let me have a look. Uh, there is one in Henderson. Yep, that'll do. If you could do that, thanks, Gareth. Actually, let me give you. Yeah, so this number here, 835. Yep. 2130. And who's that? 835 2130. Okay. Oh yes, yeah. I, I spoke to Rena there in, in length. She was the one that said to me that I should either go to the ministerial level or to go to the media. That was her response. Because, you know, I don't have any money. I'm, I, I'm not wealthy at all and I'm not going to be able to spend thousands of dollars on legal services. I've, I've spoken to the Public Defenders Service and 
they have to have a referral or I have to actually do something really bad. They won't deal with like speeding offences and infringements. Right. So, you know, I've got no justice there. I've, I had to go to the JP Federation only to find out that I needed to go to, um, sorry, the Judicial Commissioner. And then after I went to those two people, I found out I had to go to the Auckland um, JP Association to just file a complaint against the way the JP behaved. This shouldn't be happening. It's be, and in the transcripts, he says that he's, as far as he was concerned, the words require, order, and request all meant the same thing. That's against the law. The Interpretations Act states what certain words mean for a reason. So they can't be ambiguous. And that's exactly what that judge did. Because my whole argument, even be it semantical, was that that police never gave me an order. More than happy, I would have given him the shoot off my back if he'd ordered me to. Because I'm going to get compensated for any order by another man. That's how the law works, isn't it? I don't work for free. He's getting paid on the side of the road to do some enforcement things. I'm not getting paid to sit there. So if he's going to unlawfully detain me, I'm going to charge him for my time. Is that not fair? Look, I mean, I, I can't... Yeah, I know you can't comment. I'm sorry, you're probably thinking, here's some nut job on the phone having a ramble. And, and I am, in a way, I'm having a bit of a rant, and I'm, I'm sorry for you to hear it, Gareth. It's nothing against you personally. That's fine, that's not a problem. I'm just... Uh, Dumbfounded. <laughs> I, yeah, and I think, uh, like, if you have a, a complaint to do with a lawyer's conduct, then I can certainly send you a form. Um, okay, look, do you have an, an email address? Sure, yeah, email me on... Well, look, I mean, I'll, I'll send the form out um, sure. to you. That will be emailed after you. Yep. Um, and I, I do think maybe you should, um, should try and, and, and speak to a, a community law centre if you don't want to try the one at Henderson because you're probably trying to. I can give you the one for the one in um, the central city. Or... Yeah, well, go for it. Okay, so the, the number for the central city one is 377. 377. It's just really about the recording because I don't want to get into a confrontation in my daughter's presentation. And, of course, yeah, I but I still want to film it, obviously. So, um, you know. That's understandable. I yeah. think um, if, you, if you give them a call and, and ask them sure. um, that, they, they should be able to help you and, and then you can get a better understanding of whether or not you can actually or what your rights are. Right, right. Perhaps they're not used to a man or a woman standing up for themselves or, or knowing their rights. You know, even the guy at the counter at the police station said, why were you recording? And I said, because I wish to. He can't argue that, just exercising my freedom. Mm. But apparently that's so rare that I had two police cars and four officers circling my car outside their own police station, threatened in some way because I was holding a handicam in my own car. Yeah. That's, you've got to admit, Gareth, mate, that's a bit off. Sad. Okay, well, I'll right. have this form to contact you. Thanks, Gareth. Okay. Check. Thanks for listening, mate. No problem. Cheers. You. See you. Bye. What a pleasant guy. Good of him to listen to my rant. Gets me nowhere. So, New Zealand Law Society. If you've got a complaint about a lawyer, give the New Zealand Law Society a call.